and then we have this man of lawlessness. Now I'm going to show you some history, and I'll, I'll tell you where this is coming from. And this character is in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Uh, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered together to him, we ask you, brothers and sisters, not to become easily unsettled or alarmed by the teaching allegedly from us whether by a prophecy or by word of mouth or by letter, asserting that the day of the Lord has already come. Don't let anyone deceive you in any way, for that day will not come until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the man doomed to destruction. He will oppose and will exalt himself over everything that is called God or is worshiped, so that he sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. Don't you remember that when I was with you, I used to tell you these things, and now you know what is holding him back, so that he may be revealed at the proper time. For the secret power of lawlessness is already at work, but the one who now holds it back will continue to do so till he is taken out of the way. Then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord Jesus will overthrow with the breath of his mouth and destroy by the splendor of his coming. The coming of the lawless one will be in accordance with how Satan works. He will use all sorts of displays of power through signs and wonders that serve the lie, <laughs> and all the ways that wickedness deceives those who are perishing. Uh, they perish because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. For this reason, God sends them a powerful delusion so that they will believe the lie, and so that all will be condemned who have not believed the truth but have delighted in wickedness. Andra Thessalonike brevet 2, vers 1 till 11. När det gäller vår Herre Jesu Kristi ankomst, då ska vi samlas hos honom, be er er bröder, att inte tappa fattningen och bli uppskrämda. Om man hänvisar till anden eller till något som vi har sagt eller skrivit, då säger att Herrens dag är nära. Är, låt inte lura er på något vis. Det först måste avfallet ske. Och laglöshetens människa uppenbaras, undergångens son, motståndaren, han som förhäver sig över allt som kallas Gud och heligt och sätter sig i Guds tempel och utger sig för att vara Gud. Minns ni inte att jag sa detta redan när jag var hos er? Och ni vet vad det är som nu hittar honom så att han inte kan träda fram för de här stunder inne. För laglösheten är redan verksam som en hemlighet. Det som återstår är att han som har ännu hindrar röjs ur vägen. Då ska den laglösa uppbevaras. Han som Herre Jesus Kristus ska dräpa med andedräkten ur sin mun och förinta med glansen vid sin ankomst. Den laglösa ankomst är ett verk av satan, sker med stor makt, falska tecken under och med orättfärdighetens alla konster som bedrar dem som går i fördärvet. De har ju inte delat och emot den kärlek till sanningen som kunde ha räddat dem. Därför låter Gud villfarelsen få makt över dem så att de tror på lögnen och blir dömda. Alla dessa som inte tror på sanningen utan har valt ovetarhet. Okej, om du kommer ihåg vi började den här morgonen. We have four passages that are combined together into a cartoon end-time ruler. And we have taken apart three of these. We have the Antichrist, which is the Gnostic teachers. We have the beast, which is Nero or the Roman Empire. We have Daniel 9, which is Jesus. 
Ni a sus. And then we have this man of lawlessness. Now I'm going to show you some history. And I'll, I'll tell you where this is coming from. There was a, a Jewish scholar in the first century. And he had been captured by the Roman army. And he was forced to record the destruction of Jerusalem. His name is Josephus. And he wrote the history of the destruction of Jerusalem. And uh, in his book, he tells us how the destruction happened. What led to the destruction of Jerusalem was called the rebellion of the Jews. And they kept rising up against the Roman Empire again and again. Um, actually, the first time that Rome came to attack Jerusalem, there was a general leading the Roman armies. And he came and he attacked the wall of Jerusalem. And he was pushed back. And when he got pushed back, that's when all the Christians remembered Matthew 24. And they said, this is our moment to escape. So while the, the Jewish people were getting more and more arrogant, so then the Jews are getting more and more arrogant and saying God has blessed our rebellion. So saying of saying God has seen that or do good, and we cannot be defeated. Or we can eat the dinner stock now. All the Christians got up and left the city. Do do spoke all the Christians up and left the city. Then uh, the emperor's son named Titus. Men då är kejsarens son som heter Titus took command of the army and came back and surrounded Jerusalem. But they didn't immediately attack. They actually waited four months. And they're waiting for Jerusalem to uh, run out of supplies. De väntade på att Jerusalem skulle eh, bli av med sina förråd. Under normal circumstances. Under normala omständigheter. Jerusalem had literally years of food stocked up. Under normala omständigheter hade Jerusalem faktiskt eh, åratal av eh, tillgångar på mat. It's how they had defeated many armies before. Det var så de hade besegrat många mer tidigare. Because they can sit inside the wall and just wait. De kan bara sitta där och vänta med muren. And the army outside the wall will run out of supplies. Och armén utanför kommer bara inte ha några tillgångar. So under normal circumstances. Så under normala situationer. Jerusalem would have won. Så hade Jerusalem vunnit. But something went very badly here. There was a man that Josephus tells us about named John Levi, also known as the man of lawlessness. He 
he hired 20,000 mercenaries. Han hyr in eh uh, 20,000 legosoldater. And he brought them into Jerusalem. Och han tog med sig dem in i Jerusalem. And he took over the whole temple complex. Och han tog över hela tempelområdet. So he has his his small army of 20,000 of 20,000 men. Så han har sin lilla armé på 20,000 man. He's taken over the temple. Han tar över templet. And he sets a throne inside the temple. Och han sätter upp en tron inne i templet. Where he sits down. Där han sätter sig ner. And declares himself to be God. Och förklarar sig själv vara Gud. And he claims that he can perform signs and wonders. Och han säger det att han kan göra under och tecken. And he says, you must prove that you have faith in me. Och det måste bevisa att ni tror på mig. If you have faith in me. Om ni tror på mig. You will burn the storehouses of food. Så kommer ni att elda upp alla förråd med mat. And I will deliver us from the Romans. Så ska jag göra oss fria från romarna. And God says that they had a, a powerful delusion and they believed the lie. Och det står här att de hade en stor villfarelse och att de trodde på lögnen. And we have this, this other character in this passage. Vi har en andra karaktär här i det här avsnittet. The restrainer. Den som håller eh, tillbaka. The one who's holding back den, the power of lawlessness. Den som håller tillbaka är laglösheten, kraft. Another character that Josephus tells us about en annan eh, person som Josefus talar om was the Jewish high priest in Jerusalem. Var den judiska överste prästen. A man named Ananias. En man som heter Ananias. Not the same one from the New Testament. Inte den samma som i Nya Testamentet. Seems like a popular name at the time. Det kanske var ett populärt namn på den tiden. But this one was very good at negotiating with the Romans. Han var väldigt bra på att förhandla med romarna. Because Over and over again, the Jewish people would revolt. För om och om igen så gjorde de upprop judarna. And Rome would send an army. Och så skickade Rom en armé. And Ananias, this priest, would go and meet with the army. Och då gick Ananias präster och mötte armén. And he was able to negotiate peace again och, and again. Och han var, hade möjligheten att förhandla fram fred om och om igen. He was able to hold back the destruction over and over again. Han var där som kunde hålla tillbaka förstörelsen om och om igen. So we have in verse 7. Så so The secret power of lawlessness is already at work, but the one who now holds it back will continue to do so until he is taken out of the way. Laglösheten är redan verksam som en hemlighet. Det som återstår är att han som hindrar röjs ur vägen. Instead of Ananias being able to negotiate uh, in 70 AD. Istället för att Ananias skulle lyckas förhandla 70 efter Kristus. John Levi had Ananias brought in and stabbed to death. Och då tog den här John Levy, Ananias, och sen så hade han ihjäl honom. So now he's taken out of the way. Så nu försvinner han ut ur vägen här. And now the man of lawlessness is fully operating. Så nu så är han, har han fritt spelrum, laglöshetens man. So they burn the storehouses of food. Så de bränner alla förråd med mat. And Titus waits outside the wall for only four months. Och Titus väntar utanför murarna bara fyra månader. And once the food is gone, och när maten är slut, then famine breaks out. Då blir det ju svält. So now people are dying all over the city, starving to death. Så nu dör folk i hela staden, de svälter igen. 
And so now you have all these dead bodies. So now disease rips through the city. So you have people starving to death. And you have basically a plague ripping through the city. And they haven't even had a fight yet. <laughs> After four months, <laughs> Titus breaks the door down. <laughs> and the description from Josephus <laughs> is keeping in mind every building had a flat top roof. And Josephus says that Titus had nowhere to put his foot on the ground. Because bodies filled the streets. That every roof was a heap of bodies. That the people who were still wandering around were just grim skeletons. There really wasn't a fight. The people that Rome did kill, they would basically cut them in half to see that to see if they had swallowed gold coins or diamonds. Because <laughs> some people they would try to swallow the treasures they had. So that if they could escape, uh, they would have some funds. So att om de skulle lyckas rymma, då skulle de ha några medel med sig. You guys have heard this story in Matthew 25. Uh, Matthew 24, excuse me. Where it talks about two men are in the field. And one is taken and one is left. And we've been told that this has something to do with this rapture thing. But the way that the Roman armies would approach a city first they'd come to all the farms as they got close to the city. And let's say there's two people, two farmers in the field. They would cut one in half. And the other one would be left. One was taken. And one was left. And the one who's left. Would run to the nearby city. And start to spread fear. So the left behind. is a little different. Så det här lämnar kvar är lite annorlunda. So when Titus, they break the wall down. Så när Titus bryter ner muren. And he sees this horrible sight. Och när han ser den här fruktansvärda synen. Josephus records. Så skriver Josephus. That Titus began to cry. Att Titus började gråta. And he said, the hand of their God must be against them. There was no war. It's actually called the burning of Jerusalem. Because when, when Titus went into the city with his armies, and they, they were going toward the Temple Mount, which is where some of the soldiers still were. Um, there was a chaos that broke out. 
And a fire started at the temple. Och det blev en brand i templet. So now the temple is is melting. Så nu smälter templet. Because it was big stones covered in gold. För det var stora stenar som var täckta med guld. But it had big beautiful curtains inside that had lit on fire. De hade underbara stora liksom gardiner inuti som tändes el på. And so when the fire melted the gold och när då elten smälte guldet Titus said to tear down the temple stone by stone då så sa Titus ta ner tältet sten för sten let not one stone be left on another låt inte en sten lämnas ovanpå en annan so they could get all the gold that had melted så de kunde få tag på allt guldet som hade smält so they dismantled the whole building så de liksom avklädde hela byggnaden Even the in Jerusalem now we have the Western Wailing Wall. Och även nu i Jerusalem så har vi västra klagomuren. But that was never a part of the temple. Men det var aldrig del av templet. It was a wall that went around the temple. Det var en mur som var runt The temple itself is completely gone. Templet är totalt borta. So the man of lawlessness. So lawlessness man. John Levi. John Levi. Caused the destruction of Jerusalem. Orsakade Jerusalems förstörelse. He killed the good negotiator. Han dödade den som var en god förhandlare. He burned up the storehouses of food. Han brände alla förrådade mat. And he pushed it all the way until Rome destroyed them. Och han tog det hela vägen till att Rom förstörde dem. These four passages are what get combined into the end time one world ruler. Det här är de fyra avsnitten i Bibeln som man kombinerar för att prata om en enda världshärskare. There's really nothing else that, that gives us the picture of an end time ruler. We have Jesus. We have Nero. Gnosticism. And John Levi. And we've learned that we don't even have a seven-year period to look forward to. <laughs> the seven years has to do with Jesus as well. <laughs> and if, if there is something ahead of us that's negative, <laughs> we would have to look at maybe the three and a half years så skulle vi behöva titta på kanske då de här tre och ett halvt åren in the book of revelation i uppenbarelseboken <coughs> but there's no seven years in revelation det finns inga sju år i uppenbarelseboken we'll leave that alone for now vi lämnar det nu we're going to take our lunch break but I will tell you what we're going to do after vi ska ha vår lunch So we'll do an early afternoon session where I'll take you through Matthew 24 and we will look and understand every verse historically and then we'll get a nice long break for the afternoon for nap time and dinner and uh, this evening I'll, I'll probably teach a little bit more but we will also have questions and answers if you provide questions I'll try to provide answers and Aki will tell you more how we're going to do that 
And I think I'm done for now. Yeah. We need someone with a key. Yeah, <laughs> that's, we do. That's what we're waiting for. Check if somebody's. Yeah. There we go. Oh, yeah. Man, man with the power. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Power of the keys. Power of the keys. <laughs> you just go up and get some food there. Yeah, sure. Okay. Perfect. Or if I can get someone to bring it down to there, I'm not sure about that. I need to get my wallet, so those that hasn't paid yet. So, uh, thank you. It, I think it was an eye-opener for, for a very man. <laughs> yeah, they felt really hungry. Yeah. That was, that was good. Yeah. They... I guess I'll have to see 